greater than 80 thousands on Paul's testimony. After the hawkish stance of major central banks, we have to watch the economic data this week. However, with more time passing, investors adjusting themselves and their portfolio to the new policy process while looking at the stagflation will be more and more in the spotlight. At the same time, with more speeches by the decision-making members of the central banks, we have a better view and outlook of the situation. Hi, I am Ahura and in this video we're going to watch the most important events and data in the weekend. Stay with me. Number 1. The People Bank of China The week will start with the holiday in the United States and PBOC monetary policy meeting and interest rate decision. Central banks in China and Japan have continued their dovish policies over the past months. Just in May, PBOC cut the 5-year loan rates which helped the global stock markets. However, for this week, we expect to see they will stay committed to their current rates and policies with no changes, as our hawkish stance of some other central banks limited the others for more supportive policies. This stance is supposed to hold the pressure on the Chinese yuan. Number 2. U.S. Home Sales as interest rates increase and mortgage rates have already hit 5.78%, the overall expectations is to see the prices still stay high and not fall, which is different reaction with the earlier estimates and predictions. Tightening policies increase the pressure on the stock markets. Therefore, real estate market will be one of the options that we can move there to protect our capital from devaluation in other markets and against inflation. Both existing and new home sales on Tuesday and Friday are expected to increase and support the US dollar against bears. Number 3. Inflation in Canada Bank of Canada has been expecting inflation to increase. That's why it increased the rates by another 50 basis points for the second meeting in Wall, taking the policy rates to 1.50%. Since the gas and oil prices have been increasing in the past month, we expect inflation in Canada to increase by 1.2% and 6.8% respectively on monthly and annual scales. It would have a negative effect on the Canadian loan. Number 4. PMI Day Thursday, we will be purchasing manager index in the most developed economies. In the Eurozone, it's expected to decline. In the United States and United Kingdom, most likely they will be unchanged from the earlier months. However, overall numbers are lower than previous months, confirming the global economic slowdown. These numbers will put more pressure on the oil prices. Number 5. Bankers' Explanation This week, we will have many speeches by major central banks' policymakers. Monday, and while it's a holiday in the United States, after Ms. Lagarde's speech, Bullard from Federal Reserve will speak. Tuesday, RBA Governor Lube and BOE MPC member Pease's speeches will be in the spotlight. And Friday, Bullard will explain more about the Federal Reserve policies. However, Fed Chair Jeremy Powell's monetary policy report to the Congress will be watched more closely on Wednesday and Thursday. And finally, number 6. Frustration in the cryptocurrency market. If you have been following our analysis page on our website, now you wouldn't be shocked by the situation of cryptocurrency market. Over the weekend, Bitcoin fell towards 18,000 US dollars with more pressure it entered from the uneasy economic and geopolitical conditions. This pressure on the cryptocurrency market is not separate from the general conditions of other markets. This trend will change as overall negative sentiment in the financial markets changes. Thanks for watching this video and hope it's going to be an amazing week for you.